will study the skull from its lateral view that is the normal lateralis the bones seen in this view are the nasal maxilla zygomatic frontal parietal occipital the squamous part mastoid the tympanic part of the temporal bone and the greater wing of the sphenoid bone now the features seen in this view are the temporal lines the superior temporal line commences at the frontal process of zygomatic bone it passes upwards and backwards and fades away on the parietal bone temporal fascia is attached to this line inferior temporal line it commences at the same point and runs inferiorly and parallel to the superior temporal line posteriorly it curves downwards and forwards to continue with the supramastoid crest it limits the attachment of the temporalis muscle now the temporal fossa the boundaries anteriorly it is bounded by the zygomatic bone superiorly by the superior temporal line posteriorly part of the superior temporal line the supramastoid crest inferiorly by the zygomatic arch floor is formed by the frontal bone the parietal bone squamous part of the temporal bone and the greater wing of sphenoid contents of this fossa are the temporalis muscle which is attached to its floor and the inferior temporal line middle temporal artery which is a branch of the super, superficial temporal artery zygomatico temporal nerve and the deep temporal nerve from the mandibular nerve now the terion it is a circular area in the anterior part of the temporal fossa which encloses four bones frontal parietal sphenoid and the temporal bones these four bones form an h shaped suture it is located 4 cm above the zygomatic arch and 3.5 cm behind the zygomatic suture the middle meningeal vein anterior branch of middle meningeal artery and stem of the lateral sulcus of brain lies deep to terion so it is clinically very important region of the skull now the zygomatic arch it is formed in its anterior one third by the temporal process of zygomatic bone and zygomatic process of temporal bone in its posterior two third zygomatico temporal suture crosses obliquely downwards and backwards it has two surfaces outer and inner and two borders upper and lower this outer surface is subcutaneous and is crossed by the auricotemporal nerve superficial temporal vein and the superficial temporal artery the masseter muscle 
takes its origin from the inferior surface and the lower border the temporal fascia is attached to its upper border the posterior end of the lower border is marked by an articular tubercle the roots of this zygomatic arch diverge from this tubercle the anterior root passes medially in front of the mandibular fossa and the posterior root continues with the supramastoid crest now the external acoustic meatus external acoustic meatus is located behind the mandibular fossa below the posterior root of the zygoma anterior wall floor and the lower part of the posterior wall is formed by the tympanic part of the temporal bone and the upper part of the posterior wall is contributed by the squamous part of the temporal bone margins of this meatus gives attachment to cartilaginous part of external acoustic meatus the macuvan triangle or the supramatal triangle this triangle lies posterior superior to the external acoustic meatus it is bounded above by the supramastoid crest in front by the posterior superior margin of the external acoustic meatus and behind by a vertical tangent to the posterior margin of the meatus the supramatal spine or spine of henle may be present antero inferior inferiorly triangle forms the lateral wall of the tympanic or the mastoid antrum now the mastoid part of the temporal bone it lies behind the external acoustic meatus it continues anterior superiorly with the squamous temporal bone asterion it is the point where the paratomastoid occipitomastoid and lambdoid sutures meet asterion in infants it is the site of the posterior lateral or the mastoid frontanelle which closes by 12 months mastoid process is a downward projection from the temporal bone it is present below and behind the external acoustic meatus the muscles attached to this process from anterior to posterior are the sternocleidomastoid splenius capitus and longissimus capitus posterior belly of digastric takes its origin origin from the medial aspect of the digastric notch now this tailored process it is about 2.5 cm long it is slender elongated process below the external acoustic meatus and in front of the mastoid process it is directed downwards forwards and slightly medially the attachments on this styloid process together is called as the styloid apparatus it gives attachment to three muscles and two ligaments on its anterior aspect to the styloglossus posteriorly to the stylohyoid medially is the stylopharyngeus muscle laterally to the stylomandibular ligament and on it the on the tip 
is the stylohyoid ligament the infratemporal fossa it is a it is an irregular space below the zygomatic arch its boundaries anteriorly it is bounded by the posterior surface of body of maxilla medially lateral pterygoid plate and pyramidal process of palatine bone laterally by the ramus of mandible so the roof it is by the infratemporal surface of the greater wing of sphenoid and the roof is deficient most laterally the lateral pterygoid muscle take its origin from the it has two heads so the upper head takes its origin from the infratemporal surface and the crest of the greater wing of sphenoid bone where at its lower head takes its origin from the lateral surface of the ter- lateral pterygoid plate now the medial pterygoid muscle it has two heads that is the superficial head and the deep head the superficial head takes its origin from the tuberosity of the maxilla and the adjoining bone whereas the deep head takes its origin from the medial surface of the lateral pterygoid plate and the adjoining process of the palatine bone at junction of anterior and the medial wall is the ter- pterygo maxillary fissure through which it communicates with the pterygo palatine fossa at junction of its roof and anterior wall it is marked by the lateral part of the inferior orbital fissure through which it communicates with the orbit the lateral part of the fossa communicates with the temporal fossa through a gap between the zygomatic arch and the side of the skull the pterygo maxillary fissure it is a gap which leads into the pterygo palatine fossa the probe is leading into the pterygo palatine fossa it is bounded anteriorly by the maxilla and posteriorly by the pterygoid plates or the process the pterygo palatine fossa is not seen here but the boundaries anteriorly posterior surface of the maxilla posteriorly by the pterygoid process and the greater wing of the sphenoid medially by the perpendicular plate of palatine bone and floor is by the fusion of the anterior and posterior walls